leather has a rugged appeal that dates back to primitive times, when humans rubbed fats into animal skins to preserve them. Times have changed, but leather continues to endure. It's strong enough to take a lot of abuse, so it's a very tough act to follow. This leather comes from the hides of cows killed for meat. Without tanning, the cow hides would go to waste. Converting them to leather is kind of recycling. The first step is to cut each hide in half. They drape the hide over a sawhorse and then stamp an identification code onto it. They slice down the center. The two smaller pieces will be easier to handle and process than one large hide. They load hundreds of the hide sections into this modified cement mixer to undergo some serious hair removal. The mixer is filled with water as a worker dumps in a combination of sodium sulfhydrate and lime. A chemical reaction strips the hairs from the hides. They bathe the skins in acid to prime them to absorb tanning salts. The tanning happens inside big wooden drums with prongs that keep the skins from getting tangled during the process. The chrome salts turn the hides blue as they bind to the collagen fibers of the skins. This converts them to leather. They feed the leather, grain side up, to a machine that splits the leather into layers. It slices the leather on the flesh side to an even thickness. The cutoffs will be recycled into suede. They check each piece of leather with a gauge to confirm the thickness is uniform. Now it's into the wooden drums for a second tanning, but this time they use a solution of vegetable extract, tree bark and water. They add some dye and a chemical that will make the leather water resistant. The solution binds to the leather, giving it a brown tint. It's a gentler tanning than the early one and it softens the leather. Now they brush a mix of starch and water onto the tanned hides. It's a kind of paste that allows them to press the hides onto big frames of glass, which have also been moistened with the same starchy solution. Pasting the hides on glass allows them to dry flat. Wipers clean the glass between hangings, and a spray system coats it again with the starchy paste. This method allows the hides to dry without shrinking and stops the ends from curling up. After four hours in a dryer, it's time to remove the hides. They easily peel away from the glass. A revolving paint gun system sprays the leather with dye to enhance the color. And now it's time to create some friction. A glazing jack pulls a glass cylinder over the leather repeatedly and the abrasive action polishes it. This glass is very strong, so it can do this vigorous work without breaking. Finally, Huge heated rollers smooth out any wrinkles. It's the end of the production line for this big pile of leather. It will now be the stuff that many things are made of, and it's sure to live up to its tough image. <laughs>